only two people on this bus who are not particle physicists. Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com, and we are here at the Atlas Experiment at CERN in Switzerland. Take that in for a second. And the reason I'm here is I want to learn about the Higgs boson. You might have heard about this. It was something that might have been in the news last year. So I'm here with physicists here at CERN, this is Stephen Goldfarb and Dave Barney. You guys work, Stephen, you work at the Atlas Experiment here, where they actually discovered something. And Dave, CMS, you guys still working on it? No, we just still discovered it as well. Dave's oh, they still oh, okay. Yeah, Dave, verified. Verified. There, there, you, there you go. Dave so, um, so the Higgs boson. Um, that name has been written so much in the news, and there have been a lot of attempts to explain what that means to lay people because we're not all physicists. And so, you guys did a great TED Ed video um, explaining what that is, and I, I'd like to go over that for for our viewers. Sure, sure. Um, from what I understand, there's something in physics called the standard model, an equation that explains everything. Is, is, that, is that true? Not quite everything. Oh, many things. M many things. Yeah, um, and it's not just one equation. It's like a set of mathematical theories that try to answer some of the basic questions about the universe. So according to the standard model and the assumptions made in the standard model, the universe, if you break it down, you have these elementary particles. Everything. Now, atoms aren't the smallest thing. Atoms are made up of things like electrons and protons and neutrons, but those can be broken down into your gluons, your leptons, quarks, right? Well, that's nearly. That, that's true. You're getting close. Uh, yeah, getting yeah. close. He's doing a pretty good oh. job here. Yeah. Uh, you, know, we, you know, the stuff that you have here, the material that you, that you see around you, uh, this stable particles is very few. Okay, there's an up quark, a down quark. Uh, and you have electrons okay. going on. That makes up pretty much everything. You now have you can... some other carriers of force mixed right. up in that. You have gluons, you have photons, uh, and you have weak force carriers. But that's what's stable. Okay, what we have these big things to do here is to look at those particles which decay quickly, which were produced just after the Big Bang, but they decayed. And so they, they're unstable elementary particles. Yeah, they, they decay. The basic rule is that if you can decay, you do decay. I mean, look at us. We've been <laughs> yeah. decaying for years. We're all now. agents of entropy. <laughs> exactly. So, so the more massive particles decay, but we can reproduce them with a lot of energy. E equals mc squared. So in this here, the, the LHC gives a lot of energy, and it produces particles in the middle of Atlas, in the middle of CMS, which is, you can't quite see it, but it's over around On the other there. side. Go around that tunnel, and it's over there. In the middle of those detectors, it produces new particles, and it produces those particles which don't exist normally in nature, because mm. everything is decayed. But they existed just after the Big Bang. So we're trying to look at those. The standard model shows basically a map of those particles which exist. And in, among those particles uh, is the Higgs, the Higgs boson. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, the, the Higgs boson it isn't something that you can touch you can touch and feel it's not something that forms the basis of all matter it, it's something that helps explain, explain why. why right and, and particles have some sort of solidity or the objects around us you and i have some solidity and it's evidence of the higgs field right so absolutely yeah, and the higgs field is um it, it's all around us it's mm -hmm. and the way our particles interact with the higgs field theoretically is what gives us Ma mass. Absolutely. Right. Right. And the field isn't just around us, it's in us as well. It's absolutely right. it's, it's, You can't go anywhere without... So you guys had uh, an explanation um, in your TED-Ed talk about the Higgs boson, on the Higgs field, kind of like dropping a cherry into a milkshake. Can you explain mm -hmm. that? It's often said that it's very difficult for the general public to understand the things that we do here. In fact, it's, it's difficult for us to understand the things that we do here. So that this concept that we came up with 
we actually came up with having a beer in one of the CERN cafeterias, trying to understand ourselves what it was we were trying to explain, because it's really not an obvious thing to get across, and it's not obvious for us to understand either. So this example specifically, how does that work? So there, there have been a few analogies about particles in us moving through this Higgs field and gaining mass. Mm -hmm. Analogies that have come up before like that have been the famous Margaret Thatcher thing moving through a crowd of people and people gathering around her. And that can go some way to explain in the Higgs field and how particles get mass. But it didn't explain the thing that we discovered, which is the Higgs boson. Mm -hmm. So we had to try and come up with something. What, what, what has the Higgs boson got to do with this field? Right which is where the analogy that we came up with comes in. So maybe yeah. Steve... In, in the Margaret Thatcher one, let's just explain to people, yeah. that's the idea that you have a room full of, of students which represent the Higgs field, and if someone famous like Margaret Thatcher walks into the room, these people will crowd around that person, and, and she and gains she mass, gains mass like. and yeah. slows her movement yeah. through the room down. Mm -hmm. And so that, the effect of people gathering around her is like the Higgs boson. Absolutely. Right. So that, that's essentially what's, what's going on all the time for us. Some of our particles, when they go through this, this field, this milkshake, gain mass. I think pretty much all of us, yeah. when we go through a milkshake, gain mass. But yeah. uh, th those things which, are, which, which have a mass is because of that interaction. Some things like photons. You know that weird person every once in a while who doesn't eat a milkshake? Yeah. Okay. Good metabolism. They, yeah. They go straight through. They, they, they go at the speed of light. By mm -hmm. definition, and, and are, are not they don't gain uh, a mass. So, so this is an explanation. I Best see. we can come up with. And that. in your explanation, the cherry dropping on the milkshake, the splatter, that is the evidence of the, the milkshake yeah, having the viscosity yeah. and the mass. Right. It's it's this this splash, this excitation of the field, is actually. The Higgs, Higgs boson. boson. So that's what we saw here. We saw an excitation of a field, mm -hmm. and that's what's very abstract. Even after explaining it that way, I can't say that my mind understands around it. Completely. It's 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 a concept, and, and and that happens a lot in our field. We did all the easy stuff, you know. I, mean, I wouldn't say it was easy. Newton we had to do a lot of work, but watching the apple fall down and measuring it. These types of things we did for a few hundred years, everything that we could do from looking at nature, just observing somewhat passively, okay? Now we actually have to do things like this to get to the extremes. And we're at the extreme. So we need to be high energy to be able to make these more massive particles. And so you get to a world that we're not used to. Before it's a world we're used to. We're used to gravity, we understand it. Electromagnetism, okay, I can take a magnet and boom, it goes to the refrigerator. Uh, and you can grasp that, you can put your, your mind around that. When you start to get to this world, uh, which is very different than the world we're into, that's where the real challenge is, and that's, that's I think, probably yeah. the biggest challenge to our field, is to so, grasp these concepts. So this one we came up with, it, originally it was actually a, a, an olive in a martini, but <laughs> we changed it to be a little bit more uh, easy to... Family friendly. Family, family friendly, friendly, that's right. Yeah. So what, what we wanted to try to get at was that this field is all around us, but you can't see it, you can't touch it. So how do you get any evidence that it's there? Right. And it's like, if you imagine the milkshake is invisible, right. and it, you, so you can't see it, how do you get the evidence? Well, you do something to it, and you try and make it show itself. Mm -hmm. And the way it shows itself in our analogy is you drop something into it, and there's a splash comes out and you detect that splash. And so you it's say, consistent ah. with what you would think you know about milkshakes, and, right. and there you go. Right, it, that's exactly it. So, Stephen and Dave, I came all the way across the Atlantic from America to propose a new analogy, a different that's analogy. That's why we're here. And I want to, and, and yeah. as, as communicators, and I want to speak in terms that maybe my viewers Americans can understand. So, are you guys familiar with the Star Wars? Yeah. Star Wars. I've heard, heard of this? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I brought some props. Made in uh, England, right? Some, yeah, yeah. It's, it was actually. So when I read about the Higgs field, what I couldn't help think about because it's a field that's all around us, and you, like you said, in us, it's kind of like the force. 
the Higgs field is like the force. We know it exists, we think it exists in Star Wars, but we can't really prove it. So imagine if there was a room with two stormtroopers, minions of the evil empire, and Luke Skywalker walks in, the stormtrooper's immediate reaction is to shoot Luke Skywalker. And Luke Skywalker, because he is force attuned, can deflect the two blasts that the stormtroopers shoot. And those two blasts with his lightsaber are bounce off and hit the ceiling. Now, we can't say for sure that we know the force exists, but the fact that Luke Skywalker can deflect two blaster blasts and we see that the blasts are hitting the wall in the opposite direction of the stormtrooper, that is possibly evident, consistent with how we would think that the force might exist. And so then, in that example, the deflected blaster fire is the Higgs boson, and the force is the Higgs field that we're trying to find proof of. Now, what do you think about that? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave him to you. <laughs> okay, and then I'll come back and beat him up later. You, so <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to get my head around that. Um, for me, it doesn't quite work. Oh. Uh, I like the idea, I can picture it happening, which is always a good thing with an analogy. And I'm just trying to figure out why the deflection is actually evidence of the... Because the you couldn't be because able to it deflect could... it unless you were a Jedi and you had the Force. Now, Or someone who's pretty fast. Well, that's like the thing, the Higgs boson, you don't know if that's definite evidence that the Higgs field exists. It's consistent with the theory that the Higgs field exists. And just like a def someone being able to deflect many lightsaber or, or blaster blasts of lightsaber would be consistent with the idea that possibly this force would exist. Okay, I, I think Getting this is one I have to really think about. So, uh, in a way, it, 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 it could work. I mean, it, it's let, let's have a think about let's it think on about the it. in the elevator on the way up, and we'll have a further chat upstairs. Yeah, let's think about this a little more. Okay. okay. All right. So we've had some time to think about this, and Steve and Dave. What do you think about my analogy? Could it possibly work? Be nice to him. Be nice to him. Uh, so on a scale of one to ten, maybe a one. Um, I'll give it two. No. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> well, uh, okay. Let's raise it to a two because I like the little figures. Who do you want to be? Uh, I can be Luke. You, here. you can be Luke. Okay. So the, 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 I think the the problem is this no real part of the analogy that works for the Higgs field in particular. It, it could work, or it does kind of work for under, trying to visualize something that's not there, if you like. Inferring... Inferring the presence of yeah. something so, without something you can't direct see. evidence. Yeah, something you can't see. Right, something so like the air around, around us, you know, right. how do you infer that the air is actually there? Right, so. It works on that level, which is why you get one or yeah, get one, one or two. But you know, some of the parts about the Higgs field are that when particles go through it, depending on the type of particle, they get heavier or they don't get heavier. Um, in your analogy, there's no part to that. But when they go so, through the field, they might make some sort of splash in that field, and then, then you might somehow get a boson on it. Or if they were drinking <laughs> a milkshake. A milkshake. And, and they and, had a cherry. And the cherry, and the cherry fell, no wait, and, and, the, and the, the molecules of the milkshake? No, no, no. No, no it's they, not they, the molecules of the milkshake, no, 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 but in the field. Be, uh, uh, maybe it's the splash that comes out. If you drop something like a lightsaber. Yeah, you drop your lightsaber in a milkshake. A, a really <laughs> big milkshake. All the time. Actually, back then, I think. Uh, well, I mean, Yoda was having the, the lightsaber go up in the air, and it would just boom. It would be good to bring Yoda into the analogy somehow. Yeah, that might have given a three. A whole yeah. swamp yeah. of milkshake that, yeah. that they crash into. It really is the the splash of the milkshake and the cherry. That's that's the, that's the analogy you're sticking there, with. We're gonna stick with. It. I mean, there there are other things. A, a mm -hmm. splash of pretty much any any liquid, I think, will do. Yeah. Uh, or just something. 
We we do. There is stuff. Okay, to give to give some some credit, we got to give him. Let him save face a little bit. That's his that's his audience there. The, the um, <laughs> you know, uh, there are things which really challenge the mind that we've seen, so to speak, uh, in in physics. In, for example, neutrinos. Neutrinos are a fascinating thing because they they don't really get interact with anything very much. They only really the weak force and gravity affect them. Gravity is is so weak that you can forget about it. But the weak force is, is, I don't know, 10 to the 30 times stronger, at, at least. Uh, and these things, they go through stuff all the time. We've, we've heard about them. They were, they were in the, the news last year when we thought they were going too fast. Uh, these guys, you, you, you can infer their existence. That's what happened at the beginning, is we saw some tracks in a detector appear out of nowhere. So something had gone in there and made them. Or you saw a track that you know, it took a right turn. Tracks just don't do that. They have to conserve momentum. So the conservation of momentum is really important and it allows you to infer this thing which you don't have a detector, at least at this scale, that can measure. There are huge detectors that measure occasional neutrinos out of gazillions of them, uh, but normally you don't detect them. But this is one of the reasons, in fact, Atlas and CMS, their shape completely mm. surrounds the collision point, completely surrounds it because we do like to look for things that you can't see. So since conservation of momentum always works, you expect a balance of energy around the collision point. So if you look at the plane, uh, what we call the RFI plane, the, the plane that, that's, that's the, the view of, the, of a proton, uh, you should see a complete balance. And if there's some missing, and you can measure that, you measure the momentum of everything that you see, then that's an important measurement. Something's missing there. Now we know sometimes neutrinos will leave that, but we know the conditions under which neutrinos would leave that. But something would be really fascinating is if we saw a lot of this, okay, in, in, in under certain different conditions. That could give us hints for a new thing, such as uh, you know missing the, the dark matter. Mm -hmm. You know all the stuff that we're missing. That the, the there's, of all the matter in the universe, we're missing eighty percent. Don't tell them. 80% we can't account for of, of the matter in the universe. We're missing 95% because we're missing energy as well. But so there is an interest in looking for stuff that you can't see. And so maybe Luke will have a chance at, at, at finding that. Maybe his, 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 his force <laughs> will help you to find that. So in, in what a lot of you guys are doing here in physics, it's a lot of inferring things that we can't visually detect or detect in other ways yeah. with using the assumptions and the, the yeah. theories that yeah. Yeah. physicists have yeah. advised. You, use the, you have certain rules that, that are always holding, and so, so you can use those to put constraints. I will call so that a very moderate success, at least for my, <laughs> the purposes of my trip. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, Stephen and Dave. And we'll continue to think about it. Enter entertain. We will think about my, this. In my fact, I'm going to get a real lightsaber, and we're going to work this out. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll to have the, to the death. <laughs> of course. Well, I definitely see the Atlas physicists as the stormtroopers. Do you? <laughs> yeah, and we're the good guys. But... Are you the good guys? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, well, definitely. we'll see that. We'll meet you, you know, out, out in the LAC, I think halfway around the tunnel. Yeah, no, no problem. Okay. <laughs> Stephen Goldfarb from the Atlas experiment and Dave Barney from CMS, just yep. as important in discovering, in finding evidence, essentially, of the Higgs boson here in CERN in Switzerland. I'm Norm for Tessa.com. This has been so much fun. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Norm.